Welcome to our deep dive into the origins and real mythology of vampires. In this fascinating video, we explore the true roots of these legendary creatures that have captivated humanity for centuries. From the ancient tales of blood-drinking demons in Mesopotamia to the eerie folklore of Eastern Europe, join us as we uncover the historical and cultural origins of the vampire myth. Discover the real stories and beliefs that gave rise to the iconic figure of the vampire. Prepare to be intrigued and enlightened as we unravel the mysterious and dark origins of one of mythology's most enduring legends. Mesopotamia Mesopotamia, situated between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, modern-day Iraq and parts of Syria, Turkey, and Iran, is credited with many of humanity's firsts, writing, cuneiform, legal codes, Hammurabi's code, and monumental architectural achievements like ziggurats. This region, inhabited by Sumerians, Akkadians, Babylonians, and Assyrians, was a melting pot of mythologies and religious practices. The Mesopotamians believed in a plethora of deities, spirits, and supernatural entities, which were integral to their understanding of the world. Vampiric Entities in Mesopotamian Mythology 1. The Akimu, the Restless Dead one of the earliest references to vampiric entities in Mesopotamian mythology is the Akimu. The Akimu were spirits of the dead who did not receive proper burial rites or were otherwise wronged in life. These spirits were believed to be restless and malevolent, seeking to drain the life force from the living to sustain their own tortured existence. They roamed the earth, causing disease and misfortune, a theme that echoes in later vampire lore. The Akimu's characteristics of being undead, wandering the earth, and preying upon the living's vitality resonate with the classic vampire's traits. They are described in texts such as the Epic of Gilgamesh, where Gilgamesh himself encounters restless spirits. Their need to feed on the living's life force draws a direct parallel to the later European vampire's thirst for blood. 2. The Utaku, Demonic Spirits Another entity linked to vampiric mythology is the Utaku. While not exclusively vampiric, Utaku were malevolent spirits that could possess humans and cause harm. The belief in such spirits reflects a broader Mesopotamian understanding of the interaction between the spiritual and physical realms, where malevolent entities could manipulate or drain human life force. Utaku were often seen as harbingers of death and disease, much like the European vampire, which brings plague and death to its victims. These spirits' ability to possess and control humans adds another layer to the vampire mythos, where control and influence over others are recurring themes. 3. Lamashtu, the child-snatching demoness. Lamashtu is a particularly fearsome figure in Mesopotamian mythology, often depicted as a demoness who preys on infants and pregnant women. Her actions and characteristics bear a striking resemblance to later European vampire legends, especially those focusing on female vampires or succubi who prey on the vulnerable. Lamashtu's connection to blood and life force is evident in her myths. She was believed to cause miscarriages and suck the blood of newborns, paralleling the vampire's consumption of blood to sustain itself. Protective amulets and incantations were used to ward off her malevolent presence, akin to how later cultures used garlic, crosses, and holy water against vampires. Blood and Ritual in Mesopotamian Culture Blood played a crucial role in Mesopotamian rituals and religious practices. Sacrifices, both animal and human, were conducted to appease gods and spirits, with blood often seen as a potent life force. This cultural emphasis on blood as a source of life and power provides a foundational context for the later vampire mythos, where the consumption of blood becomes central. The ritualistic aspects of blood in Mesopotamian culture can be seen in the burial practices designed to ensure the dead did not become restless spirits. Proper burial rites were essential to prevent the deceased from returning as a kimu or other malevolent entities. The fear of the dead rising and the measures taken to prevent it echo the European practices of staking corpses and burying them with protective items to prevent them from becoming vampires. The Spread and Evolution of Vampiric Myths As Mesopotamian culture interacted with neighboring civilizations through trade, conquest, and migration, its myths and legends spread and evolved. The concept of malevolent, 
blood-drinking spirits likely influenced the mythologies of other ancient cultures, including the Greeks, Egyptians, and Hebrews. 1. Influence on Greek and Roman Myths Greek mythology, which also contributed significantly to Roman beliefs, contains numerous references to blood-drinking entities and restless spirits. The Greek Lamia, a demoness who devoured children and drank their blood, and the Roman Strix, a bird-like creature that fed on human flesh and blood, both show clear parallels to Mesopotamian entities like Lamashtu and the Akimu. 2. Hebrew and Early Christian Adaptations The Hebrew Lilith, who is believed to have originated from Mesopotamian mythology as a night demon, preys on infants and pregnant women much like Lamashtu. Lilith's evolution into a figure in Jewish folklore as Adam's first wife who became a demoness also shares thematic elements with vampiric legends, particularly her association with night and blood. Early Christian texts and apocryphal writings often incorporated these ancient myths, reshaping them to fit Christian theology. The association of vampires with evil, darkness, and blood could be seen as a continuation of these ancient fears and mythologies. Vampires in Later European Folklore By the time vampire legends began to crystallize in European folklore during the medieval period, the core elements, undead beings rising from the grave, a thirst for blood, and causing death and disease, were well established. These stories flourished in Eastern Europe, particularly in Slavic regions, where detailed accounts of vampire encounters became common. The Slavic vampire, known as the Yuper, or Vampir, retained many characteristics of the Mesopotamian Akimu and Ituku, including the need for proper burial rites to prevent the dead from returning and the use of specific rituals to combat them. The fear of vampires causing plagues and misfortune was also a direct continuation of the ancient belief in malevolent spirits. Ancient Greece and Rome One of the most notable figures in Greek mythology resembling a vampire is the Lamia. According to legend, Lamia was a beautiful queen of Libya who became a child-eating demon. Her story varies, but one version states that she was originally a lover of Zeus. Hera, in her jealousy, killed all of Lamia's children, driving Lamia to madness and a thirst for the blood of infants. Lamia became a monstrous figure who would suck the blood of young children, embodying the traits we associate with vampires. Empusa, another creature from Greek mythology, was a demonic entity that served the goddess Hecate. Empusa was said to seduce men, drink their blood, and devour their flesh. Descriptions of Empusa often depict her with a leg of bronze and a leg of a donkey, emphasizing her supernatural and grotesque nature. She was known to take on various forms to lure her victims, much like the shape-shifting abilities attributed to vampires in later folklore. The Stryges The Stryges, or Strix in singular form, were another type of creature in Greek mythology that shared similarities with vampires. The Stryges were bird-like creatures that fed on human flesh and blood. They were often associated with witches and were believed to be nocturnal entities that could transform into birds of prey. The Stryges would prey upon infants and young children, reinforcing the theme of blood-drinking and nocturnal predation. Ancient Roman Adaptations The Strix and Strygi The Romans borrowed many elements from Greek mythology, including the concept of the Strix. In Roman mythology, the Strix was similarly depicted as a bird of ill omen that fed on human flesh and blood. The Romans, however, expanded the myth to include the Strygi, a term used to describe witches who could transform into these vampiric birds. The belief in Strygi persisted throughout the Roman Empire and influenced later European folklore about witches and vampires. The Lamii and Nocturnal Spirits Roman mythology also featured the Lamii, who retained their child-eating and blood-drinking characteristics from Greek myth. Over time, the Romans incorporated these figures into their own beliefs about nocturnal spirits and demons. These spirits were thought to haunt the night, preying on the vulnerable, and were often blamed for sudden infant deaths or mysterious illnesses. The Revenants In addition to these mythological creatures, the Romans also had beliefs about revenants, or the reanimated dead. These revenants were thought to return from the grave to haunt the living, often driven by a need for vengeance or unfinished business. 
While not specifically blood drinkers, the concept of the Revenant laid the groundwork for later vampire myths, which often involved the dead rising from their graves to feed on the living. Cultural and Religious Influences Funerary Practices and Fear of the Dead Both Greeks and Romans had complex funerary practices and beliefs about the afterlife that contributed to their fear of the dead. Improper burials or the lack of proper rites were believed to lead to restless spirits, who could return to harm the living. The idea of the dead returning to life and the need to appease or protect oneself from these spirits were common themes. In Greece, the belief in restless spirits called revenants was prevalent. These spirits were thought to wander the earth if they were not given proper funerary rites. The fear of the dead returning influenced various protective measures, such as burying the dead with coins for Sharon, the ferryman of the underworld, to ensure their passage. The Role of Religion Religion played a significant role in shaping these myths. In Greece, the worship of gods like Hecate, who was associated with witchcraft and the night, contributed to the belief in nocturnal creatures like the Impusa. Hecate's association with the underworld and her ability to traverse the boundaries between life and death made her a key figure in these myths. In Rome, the worship of deities such as Diana and her counterpart, Hecate, reinforced beliefs about night spirits and witchcraft. Diana, as a goddess of the hunt and the moon, was often invoked in magical practices. The blending of these religious elements with local superstitions created a rich tapestry of beliefs about creatures that preyed on the living. The Evolution of Vampire Mythology Medieval and Renaissance Periods As the centuries progressed, the myths from ancient Greece and Rome evolved, influenced by the changing social, religious, and cultural landscapes of Europe. During the medieval period, fear of the undead persisted, with various local legends across Europe describing revenants, ghouls, and other nightmarish creatures. The concept of the vampire as we know it today began to take shape during the late medieval and early Renaissance periods. The Slavic regions, in particular, contributed significantly to the modern vampire myth. Stories of the Yupper, a type of undead being that drank the blood of the living, began to circulate. These Slavic myths were heavily influenced by earlier Greco-Roman beliefs in revenants and blood-drinking creatures. The 18th Century Vampire Hysteria The 18th century saw a surge in vampire hysteria in Eastern Europe, particularly in regions such as Serbia, Hungary, and Romania. This period was marked by numerous reported cases of vampire attacks and exhumations of suspected vampires. The characteristics of these vampires, drinking blood, nocturnal activity, and a need to be staked through the heart, were reminiscent of earlier Greco-Roman myths, albeit more fully developed into the vampire archetype we recognize today. Literature and Popular Culture The vampire myth was further solidified and popularized in the 19th and 20th centuries through literature and popular culture. Works such as Bram Stoker's Dracula drew heavily on Eastern European vampire legends, but also echoed the ancient fears of the undead and blood-drinking creatures. Stoker's portrayal of Count Dracula as an aristocratic yet predatory figure can be seen as an evolution of the ancient myths, combining the sophistication of later vampire lore with the primal fears rooted in ancient Greece and Rome. Slavic Folklore The concept of the vampire, or vampir, in many Slavic languages, is believed to have originated in Eastern Europe. The earliest references to vampires come from Slavic oral traditions, which were passed down through generations. These traditions often portrayed vampires as malevolent, undead beings that rose from their graves to harm the living. Several key factors contributed to the development of vampire lore in Slavic cultures. Pagan beliefs and practices Before the Christianization of the Slavic regions, the local populations practiced various forms of paganism. These belief systems included a rich pantheon of deities and spirits, both benevolent and malevolent. The notion of the dead returning to life as evil spirits can be traced back to these pagan roots. Rituals and superstitions aimed at appeasing or warding off these spirits were common. Disease and death, high mortality rates, particularly from diseases like the plague, often led to mass deaths. In times of epidemic, 
the inability to explain the cause of such widespread suffering led people to attribute these deaths to supernatural forces. Graves of suspected vampires were often disturbed, and the corpses were subjected to various mutilations to prevent them from rising from the dead. Folkloric Syncretism With the advent of Christianity, many pagan beliefs were absorbed into the new religious framework. This syncretism allowed for the continuation of vampire lore, albeit in a form that was influenced by Christian demonology. Vampires were often associated with sin and heresy, and their presence was seen as a sign of divine punishment. Characteristics of Vampires in Slavic Mythology The characteristics and behaviors of vampires in Slavic folklore vary across different regions, but several common traits can be identified. Undead Nature Vampires are typically described as reanimated corpses. Unlike ghosts or spirits, they have a physical presence and can interact with the living world. Their bodies are often said to be unusually preserved, showing little to no signs of decay. Bloodsucking, one of the most well-known attributes of vampires is their need to drink blood. This aspect of the myth likely arises from ancient beliefs about the life-giving properties of blood. In some traditions, vampires also consume flesh, particularly the heart. Transformation and powers, vampires are often depicted as having supernatural abilities, such as shape-shifting into animals, especially bats or wolves, enhanced strength, and the ability to control the weather. These powers make them formidable adversaries and add to their mystique. Methods of creation, according to Slavic folklore, there are several ways a person could become a vampire. These include dying an unnatural death, being cursed, or engaging in immoral behavior during their lifetime. In some traditions, a person born with certain physical anomalies, such as a call, teeth, or a tail, was believed to be predestined to become a vampire. Weaknesses and defenses, various methods were believed to be effective in protecting against or destroying vampires. Common practices included driving a wooden stake through the vampire's heart, decapitating the corpse, burning the body, or burying it at a crossroads. Other protective measures involved the use of garlic, holy water, and religious symbols like crosses. Cultural significance of vampires in Slavic societies Vampire myths held significant cultural importance in Slavic societies, serving various social and psychological functions. Explaining the unexplained, in pre-scientific societies, vampire myths provided explanations for mysterious or frightening occurrences, such as sudden deaths, epidemics, and nocturnal disturbances. The belief in vampires offered a way to make sense of the unknown and exert some measure of control over it. Social cohesion and norms, stories of vampires often reinforced social norms and moral behaviors. By linking vampirism to immoral actions or sinful behavior, these myths encouraged conformity to societal standards. The fear of becoming a vampire after death served as a deterrent against deviant behavior. Community rituals, the communal actions taken to identify and destroy vampires, such as exhuming graves and performing protective rituals, strengthened community bonds. These activities provided a sense of collective action and shared purpose, particularly in times of crisis. Psychological comfort, belief in vampires and the rituals associated with them offered psychological comfort to people dealing with grief and loss. The idea that a deceased loved one could return as a vampire allowed for a continued connection with the dead, even if in a feared and negative form. Evolution of Vampire Lore the lore surrounding vampires has evolved significantly over time, influenced by cultural exchange, literary works, and modern media. Medieval and Renaissance Periods During the medieval and Renaissance periods, vampire beliefs were documented by various scholars and travelers. These accounts helped to disseminate vampire myths beyond the Slavic regions. The fear of vampires was prevalent enough that legal and religious texts sometimes addressed the issue. The Age of Enlightenment, the 18th century saw a surge of vampire hysteria in Eastern Europe, particularly in the Habsburg monarchy. Reports of vampire attacks and exhumations were widespread, prompting official investigations. These events attracted the attention of Enlightenment thinkers, who often viewed vampire beliefs as superstitions needing to be debunked. 
Literary and artistic influence, the 19th century marked a significant shift in the portrayal of vampires, driven by literature and the arts. Works such as John Polidori's The Vampire (1819) and Bram Stoker's Dracula (1897) redefined the vampire myth, introducing elements of aristocracy, seduction, and gothic horror. These literary vampires were more sophisticated and less tied to the peasant roots of Slavic folklore. Modern interpretations In the 20th and 21st centuries, vampires have become a staple of popular culture. Films, television shows, and novels have continued to reinterpret and reinvent the vampire myth. Modern vampires often retain some elements of their folkloric origins but are also depicted as complex, sometimes sympathetic characters. The romanticization of vampires, seen in works like In Rice's The Vampire Chronicles and the Twilight series by Stephanie Meyer, reflects changing cultural attitudes towards these mythical beings. Western Europe Vampire-like creatures have existed in various cultures long before the term vampire was coined. Ancient civilizations, such as the Greeks, Romans, and Egyptians, had myths about blood-drinking entities and spirits. For instance, the Greeks spoke of the striges, nocturnal birds that drank human blood, and the Lamii, which were female demons who consumed children. These early myths laid the groundwork for the vampire legends that would later flourish in Europe. Medieval Europe and the Spread of Vampire Lore The concept of the vampire as we recognize it began to take shape in medieval Europe. During this period, superstitions about death and the afterlife were rampant, fueled by the high mortality rates from plagues and wars. The fear of the dead returning to harm the living was a common theme. In many parts of Europe, particularly Eastern Europe, the term vampire started to emerge in local folklore, derived from the Slavic word vampire. Western European Vampire Myths The Balkans and Slavic Influence while Western Europe has its unique vampire myths, much of its folklore was influenced by the rich traditions of the Balkans and Slavic regions. The Balkans, in particular, were a hotbed of vampire superstition. In these regions, vampires were often depicted as bloated, ruddy-faced corpses, quite different from the pale, gaunt figures popularized by later literature and film. These creatures, known as Mora or Vrikalakas, were believed to rise from their graves to drink the blood of the living, causing illness and death. The British Isles, From Revenants to Vampires In the British Isles, vampire-like myths were also prevalent. The concept of the Revenant or Walking Dead was common in medieval British folklore. Revenants were often associated with unholy deaths or improper burials. They were believed to return from the grave to torment the living, spreading disease and death. One famous account is the Kroglin Grange story, a 19th century tale about a vampire-like creature terrorizing a family in Cumberland, England. The Evolution of Vampire Mythology The Enlightenment and the Rationalization of Vampires During the Enlightenment, the vampire myth underwent significant transformation. The Age of Reason brought about a more scientific approach to understanding phenomena, and vampire hysteria was often explained through medical and psychological conditions. For example, the condition porphyria, which can cause sensitivity to sunlight and a craving for iron, found in blood, was sometimes cited as a possible explanation for vampire legends. Literature and the Romanticization of Vampires the 18th and 19th centuries saw a literary explosion that forever changed the vampire myth. Writers such as Lord Byron and John Polidori began to romanticize the vampire, transforming it from a grotesque monster into a charismatic, seductive figure. Polidori's The Vampire, 1819, often considered the first vampire novel, introduced the archetype of the aristocratic vampire, which would later be epitomized by Bram Stoker's Dracula, 1897. Stoker's Dracula drew heavily on earlier vampire legends but also introduced new elements that became staples of vampire mythology, such as the vampire's aversion to sunlight and garlic, the ability to transform into bats, and the necessity of a wooden stake to kill them. Dracula solidified the vampire's place in Western culture and paved the way for countless adaptations and reinterpretations. 
Cultural Significance of Vampires in Western Europe Symbolism and Social Commentary Vampires have always been more than just supernatural creatures, they are rich in symbolism and often reflect societal fears and anxieties. In Western Europe, vampires have been used to explore themes of sexuality, death, and the other. For instance, the vampire's need to feed on blood can be seen as a metaphor for predatory sexuality or the spread of disease, echoing fears of syphilis and later, AIDS. The aristocratic vampire also serves as a critique of the elite, highlighting the parasitic nature of the ruling class feeding off the lower classes. This theme is evident in works such as Sheridan Le Fanu's Carmilla, 1872, which portrays a predatory female vampire preying on a young woman, subtly addressing issues of class and gender. The Vampire in Popular Culture The 20th and 21st centuries have seen the vampire myth continue to evolve, adapting to contemporary contexts and remaining a potent cultural symbol. Vampires have appeared in countless films, television series, and books, from the classic horror of Bela Lugosi's Dracula, 1931, to the romantic fantasy of Stephanie Meyer's Twilight series, 2005 to 2008. In modern popular culture, vampires often reflect current societal concerns, such as the fear of the outsider, the quest for eternal youth, and the complexities of morality. Series like Buffy the Vampire Slayer, 1997 to 2003, and True Blood, 2008 to 2014, use vampires to explore issues of identity, acceptance, and the struggle between good and evil. Reanimation of Corpses The concept of reanimated corpses predates the vampire myths we are familiar with today. Ancient civilizations had their own versions of the undead. The Mesopotamians, Egyptians, Greeks, and Romans all had stories of the dead returning to life. These early tales often depicted reanimated corpses as malevolent beings, bringing disease and disaster to the living. In ancient Egypt, for example, the dead were believed to have a form of afterlife, but there were also fears of the dead returning in a more sinister form. The Greek and Roman myths included creatures like the Empusa and Lamia, female demons who would drink the blood of children and seduce men before killing them. These myths likely contributed to the evolving concept of the vampire. Cultural and Folklore Origins The term vampire itself originated in Eastern Europe, where the folklore was rich with stories of undead beings preying on the living. The Slavic cultures, in particular, were instrumental in shaping the vampire mythos. In these cultures, the belief in reanimated corpses was widespread, often rooted in explanations for otherwise unexplainable phenomena such as sudden deaths, mysterious illnesses, or natural disasters. Slavic Folklore In Slavic folklore, Vampires were often the result of improper burial practices or the result of individuals leading sinful lives. The Moroi and Strigoi of Romanian folklore are prime examples. Moroi were thought to be the reanimated bodies of dead children, while Strigoi were the restless spirits of those who had died violently or unbaptized. Both were believed to come back from the dead to terrorize the living, feeding on their blood. The process of becoming a vampire in these tales was directly tied to the reanimation of the corpse. A body that did not decompose properly, was buried without proper rites, or showed signs of swelling or a ruddy complexion, interpreted as a sign of blood consumption, was suspected of vampirism. To prevent this, graves were often disturbed, and corpses were subjected to rituals such as staking, decapitation, or burning to ensure they remained dead. Western European Influence In Western Europe, the vampire myth took on different nuances. Here, the reanimation of corpses was often linked to witchcraft and the devil. During the medieval period, the fear of vampires was intertwined with the fear of witches and heretics. The reanimated corpse was seen as a tool of Satan, used to spread fear and chaos among the faithful. In Germanic folklore, the Naxer was a type of vampire that was believed to return from the dead due to improper death rituals or due to suicide. These vampires were thought to bring plagues and could only be stopped by decapitation and burning, similar to the methods used in Eastern Europe. Mythological Foundations 
The mythology surrounding the reanimation of corpses and their transformation into vampires draws heavily from various religious and superstitious beliefs. The fear of the dead returning was a common theme in many cultures, often serving as a metaphor for unresolved guilt, unpunished evil, or the natural fear of death and decay. The Biblical Influence Christianity played a significant role in shaping vampire mythology. The concept of the dead rising is present in the Bible, most notably in the story of Lazarus and the prophecy of the resurrection of the dead at the end of times. However, the idea of a cursed resurrection, where the dead come back as vampires, was more closely associated with sin and divine punishment. In medieval Europe, the idea that corpses could be reanimated by demonic forces or due to the sins of the deceased became widespread. The church often linked vampirism with heresy, witchcraft, and excommunication, further entrenching the fear of reanimated corpses in the public consciousness. The Plague and Vampirism The bubonic plague, which devastated Europe in the 14th century, also contributed to vampire myths. The plague's symptoms and rapid spread were mysterious and terrifying. Corpses of plague victims were often blamed for spreading the disease posthumously. Graves were reopened, and bodies showing minimal decomposition, due to the cold climate, were suspected of being vampires. In some cases, the bodies were found with blood at their mouths, which was a natural decomposition process but interpreted as evidence of nocturnal feeding. This reinforced the belief that these corpses were reanimated and responsible for the continued spread of the plague. Literary and Cultural Evolution The vampire myth continued to evolve through literature and cultural expressions. The 18th and 19th centuries saw a surge in vampire literature, which both reflected and shaped contemporary beliefs about reanimated corpses and vampirism. Early Literary Works one of the earliest literary mentions of vampires is found in The Vampire, 1819, by John Polidori, which established many conventions of vampire fiction. Polidori's vampire, Lord Ruthven, was an aristocratic figure, blending the fears of the reanimated corpse with social anxieties about the upper class preying on the lower classes. Another significant work is Carmilla, 1872, by Sheridan Le Fanu, which introduced a female vampire and added elements of seduction and forbidden sexuality to the vampire myth. These works paved the way for the most famous vampire of all, Count Dracula, in Bram Stoker's Dracula, 1897. Dracula and Modern Vampires Dracula consolidated many aspects of the vampire myth, drawing from Eastern European folklore, Christian symbolism, and contemporary anxieties about disease and degeneration. Stoker's novel portrays Dracula as a reanimated corpse who feeds on the blood of the living to maintain his vitality, a direct continuation of the ancient fears of reanimated corpses. In modern times, the vampire myth has been adapted and reinterpreted in countless ways, from Anne Rice's sympathetic vampires in the Vampire Chronicles to the sparkling vampires of Twilight. Despite these variations, the core concept of the vampire as a reanimated corpse remains central. Scientific Explanations With advancements in science and medicine, many of the phenomena that were historically attributed to vampirism can now be explained. Conditions such as porphyria, tuberculosis, and catalepsy might have contributed to the vampire myth. These diseases can cause symptoms that mimic those attributed to vampires, such as sensitivity to light, wasting away, and seemingly lifeless states. Blood Drinking Blood drinking entities predate modern conceptions of vampires, appearing in ancient civilizations such as Mesopotamia, Greece, and Rome. The ancient Mesopotamians feared the Ekimu, restless spirits who drained life forces. Similarly, the Greeks spoke of the Kempusa, a shape shifting demoness who seduced men before feasting on their blood. These early myths reflect an underlying fear of death and the unknown embodying anxieties about the afterlife and the violation of bodily sanctity. Slavic Folklore, The Proto-Vampire The vampire as we recognize it today has roots in Eastern European folklore, particularly within the Slavic regions. Stories of revenants, corpses that returned from the dead to harm the living, were widespread. 
These beings, often referred to as Yupir in Russia or Vampir in Serbia, exhibited many traits associated with modern vampires, nocturnal activity, aversion to sunlight, and a thirst for blood. The Slavs believed that improper burial or untimely death could lead to vampirism, with the vampire returning to drain the life from their kin. Historical Accounts and the Evolution of Vampire Lore The Plague and Vampire Panics During the Black Death in the 14th century, Europe was rife with death and uncertainty. Unexplained deaths led to a surge in vampire-related hysteria. Misunderstandings of decomposition fueled beliefs in vampires, for instance, a corpse that appeared fresh with blood at its mouth was seen as a sign of vampirism. Graves were often exhumed, and suspected vampires were staked through the heart to prevent their return. Medieval and Renaissance Superstitions Medieval Europe was a breeding ground for vampire legends, influenced by the Church's teachings about sin and damnation. The Renaissance period saw the vampire myth merge with witchcraft and devilry. Literature from this era, including treatises on witch hunts and demonology, often referenced vampiric creatures. These texts further entrenched the idea that blood drinking was linked to supernatural evil. Eastern Europe and the Case of Arnold Pole One of the most notable historical accounts of vampirism occurred in the 18th century with Arnold Pole, a Serbian soldier. After his death, villagers reported seeing Paole and suffering from mysterious illnesses. The exhumation of Paole's body revealed it to be unusually preserved, with fresh blood at his lips. This case, along with others, was documented and widely circulated, reinforcing the existence of vampires in the popular imagination. Cultural Interpretations and Literary Contributions Romanticism and the Literary Vampire the 19th century marked a significant transformation in vampire mythology through literature. The vampire became a subject of fascination during the Romantic era, evolving from a monstrous revenant into a more complex character. John Polidori's The Vampire, 1819, is often credited as the first modern vampire story, introducing Lord Ruthven, an aristocratic and seductive vampire. This depiction laid the groundwork for the literary evolution of vampires. Bram Stoker's Dracula The publication of Bram Stoker's Dracula in 1897 cemented the vampire's place in Western culture. Stoker synthesized various folkloric elements, such as the vampire's aversion to sunlight and need for blood, while creating a compelling and enduring character in Count Dracula. The novel's depiction of Dracula as both a nobleman and a predatory monster highlighted themes of power, sexuality, and the fear of the other. Dracula profoundly influenced subsequent portrayals of vampires in literature and film. Vampires in Modern Media In the 20th and 21st centuries, vampires continued to evolve within popular culture. They became symbols of various societal issues, from the exploration of sexuality in and Rice's The Vampire Chronicles to the teenage angst and romance of Stephanie Meyer's Twilight series. Television series like Buffy the Vampire Slayer and True Blood further expanded the mythos, presenting vampires as complex beings grappling with their humanity and monstrous nature. Real-world influences and medical misunderstandings. Porphyria and Rabies. Certain medical conditions may have contributed to the vampire myth. Porphyria, a rare blood disorder, can cause severe sensitivity to sunlight, leading sufferers to avoid daylight, mirroring vampire behavior. Additionally, rabies, a disease that affects the nervous system, can induce symptoms such as hypersensitivity, aggressiveness, and a propensity to bite, potentially inspiring tales of vampirism. The Fear of Disease and Contagion Throughout history, pandemics and plagues have fueled fears of vampires. The association between blood and life force, coupled with the observable spread of disease, led to the belief that vampirism could be transmitted like an illness. This notion is evident in the way vampire myths often align with outbreaks of disease, where the undead were thought to rise and spread their curse. Psychological and Symbolic Interpretations The Archetypal Vampire Psychologically, vampires embody various human fears and desires. 
Carl Jung's concept of the shadow, the unconscious part of the personality that harbors repressed traits, resonates with the vampire archetype. Vampires symbolize the darker aspects of human nature, such as the lust for power, eternal youth, and forbidden pleasures. This makes them compelling and relatable antagonists and protagonists in storytelling. Symbolism of Blood Blood is a potent symbol, representing life, death, and transformation. In religious and mythological contexts, blood rituals often signify rebirth and purification. Vampires, through their consumption of blood, can be seen as enacting a perverse form of this transformation, attaining immortality at the cost of their humanity. This duality makes vampires enduring symbols of both fear and fascination. Thanks for joining us on this journey into the origins and real mythology of vampires. If you found these ancient bloodsucking tales intriguing, be sure to like, share, and subscribe for more fascinating content. From the eerie legends of Eastern Europe to the chilling stories from around the world, vampires continue to captivate our imagination. Stay curious and keep exploring the dark corners of folklore and history. Until our next adventure into the shadows, may you stay safe from the creatures of the night. Farewell, and remember, the best way to keep vampires at bay is to stay informed.